Hi, my name is Hardy Rupan and I am the man in the wild. And in today's episode, I'm going to show you how to clean and gut two different types of wild meat. Now, if this isn't your type of topic, you can go ahead and skip this video. But I'll see you in the next one. For those of you who are interested, I'm going to show you how to clean a maniku and a guti. Stay tuned for that. Please consider supporting our channel by clicking the subscribe button and the bell icon. We will start with the maniku. A roasting technique is used to remove the hair from the maniku. We are using a roasting torch in this case, but you can also use an open fire or a propane stove, whichever method is handy to you. Roasting is the best method for removing the hair on the maniku. In addition to getting all of the hair off, the roasting process adds flavor into the meat. Possum or maniku is a delicacy here in Trinidad and is the most common and favorite wild meat. A lot of people believe that the maniku is a rodent because it resembles a large rat. But this is far from the truth. The maniku is actually related to the kangaroo. They are both marsupials. They both have pouch in which they carry their young. The maniku is not a rodent. It's a marsupial. When roasting the maniku, the aim is to try and singe all of the hair on its body, as well as the skin on its tail. No. After the roasting, the hair is scraped off the body. In this case, we are using a coquille broom, but you can use a knife or brush if you choose. The scaly surface of the skin on the tail is pulled off by hand. Once roasted properly, it comes off very easily. What remains is the thick, soft, white, edible skin. If you were unable to get all of the hair off after the first roasting, you can give it a second and third roasting. After the coquille broom is used to remove most of the hair, a knife is used to give it that final scrape to remove all the small hairs. A final roasting is given to remove any of those hidden hairs and to give the skin that extra roasted flavor. A final touch up and this part of the process is completed. We will get back to the maniku in a while. Although the guti can be roasted, we prefer to use hot water to clean it. Bring a pot of water to a rolling boil and then turn off the heat. Submerge the guti in the boiling water for about 30 seconds. 
and then remove it. Well, yeah. Once the hair can be pulled off easily by your hand, remove it from the hot water. You can now use a knife and simply scrape off the hair. It leaves a beautiful white skin underneath. The guti is another common wild meat delicacy found in Trinidad. Unlike the maniku, the guti is a rodent together with the squirrel and lap. These are all rodents that are found in Trinidad. The capybara, which has been introduced to Trinidad in the last few years, is also a rodent. The guti is like the local version of wild rabbits in Trinidad. They multiply heavily, and because of this, there is a lot of them in the local forest. Getting the hair off the aguti is very simple using this hot water and scraping technique. Once all the hair has been scraped off, you can now cut off the feet at its ankles. Most wild animals have scented glands in which they use for the purpose of mating and marking their territories. These scented glands must be removed during the process of cleaning the animal. If the glands are not removed properly and cooked with the meat, you end up with a very distasteful meal. Most persons who have tried wild meat and found it to be very distasteful, it's because the meat was not prepared properly and the glands was cooked with the meat. And those who have tasted properly cleaned wild meat can tell you it's better than any farm-grown animal you can eat. Once you have removed all the hair and the feet, it's time to remove the scent gland and gut. In Trinidad, we usually refer to the scent glands as the mess. For the aguti, the scent glands are located on either side of its butt. The scent glands appear to be small balls within the fat of the animal. By removing its butt and surrounding fat tissue, you would also remove its scent glands. You can then cut through its pelvis and continue the gotten process. You can then remove the gut wall lining and the gut. Um, it'll be in front of the rib cage, right? So I try not to bust it. Yeah, try not to bust it. But the meat will stay like this, just like. Oi, oi, oi! I see any balls. Oh, I see any balls. See balls. Look at me. No, that is not the kidneys. Are these the kidneys or testicles? Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. The gut comes out with all its organs. You can salvage the organs such as the heart and liver if you wish. Heart and 
guts are not okay nothing. In the the gooty is now ready to be washed and cut up for the pot. And now we are back to the maniku. After the maniku has cooled from the roasting, it's time to give him a bath. Give it a generous scrub with some soap baby, and water. This bat gives its skin a beautiful golden brown appearance. The maniku has eight scent glands or mist. Start by cutting the skin around its neck. The first two scent glands is found right under the skin at the neck. These are the largest scent glands in the maniku's body and they are found on both sides of the neck. They appear to be fatty muscular tissues but is not connected to any of the other muscle tissues around. This is the process to remove them. That's one. He is now removing the tongue and windpipe in this cut. The second mess is being removed here. The maniku has a lot of meat in its cheeks. The next two miss or scent gland can be found in the pits of the front legs. These appear as balls in the fatty tissue. You can cut through the skin and remove them. You have to take care to remove all of the scent glands. If any of the scent glands remain, it will taint the taste of the meat. Yeah. I expect him to come back and meet all the day, no matter if, if I catch a killer beast now. 
Right, well, he gone out. Well, he has the red eye pig, yeah. Hmm? You see the red eye pig, so he has a little car. You can't come out of the bush now, boy. Hmm? The next two sun glands to be removed is found on the side of the butt, just like the guti. <laughs> Removing the entire butt with the fatty tissue around it usually gets rid of these two sun glands. Cut through the pelvis bone and continue gutting the manicure. Remember, we still have another two mess to remove at the back legs. Jemma Pig, why kill long day, long day? Well, Jemma Pig. Now that the gut has been removed, we can remove the mess or scent glands from the hind legs. The scent glands are located in the fatty tissues between the skin and the muscle. It usually appears to be small balls. So just to recap, there is two scent glands on the neck, two at either of the front legs, two at either of the back legs, and two on the side of its butt. Once you have removed all of the scent glands, its gut, you can then remove its paws and the tip of its tail. Wash and cut up. It's now ready for the pot. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and a comment. It goes a really long way to helping my channel. I'll see you in the next video. Please consider supporting our channel by clicking the subscribe button and the bell icon.